Hey guys, today we're going to look into Pixel Persona tools in Affinity Designer version 2. Uh, way back, I make a similar video for all of the vector tools, so you can check that out as well. And I lied in that video, I said I will cover all of the Affinity Designer tools, I mean vector drawing tools, and this time we're focusing on raster tools. So I'm here now in Affinity Designer, and at the very top, you can see that three personas. The, the, the default one is designer persona with all of the vector drawing tools we covered last time. And today we are switching into pixel persona. So now we will be working with pixel based graphics. As you can see, the whole panel change. Let me show you this again. Go back to designer. We got our vector tools. Click on the pixel persona. And we got different tools now. And that was a huge selling point when Affinity Designer was first released, that we can create a vector graphics, switch to pixel persona, and make some raster modification, brushing, texturing on that illustration in one go, in one program. Before that, people need to buy Affinity, sorry, Adobe Illustrator for vectors and Adobe Photoshop for, for rasters, and they try to kind of add this mini, mini, raster editor in form of pixel persona within the program. So let's take a look. At the very top, we got the selection tools. So we can select pixels. This time we are not working with vector objects, so we need some kind of selection methods. We can select pixels, we can deselect. I like to use this shortcut. So if you go to selection, you see the deselect is command or control D. That's important when working with pixels to Keep your selection clean. If you don't need the selection, just deselect. So that's for one pixel selection. And finally, our favorite freehand. It's called freehand here, but we all know this tool as the lasso tool. And we got three modes here. We can make a one that is clickable and drawing sharp lines in between. And finally, the magnetic one that will snap to the color to the edge of the object automatically. In my case, my canvas is blank, so let's load a raster image here first. We can do it by using the stock panel. Let's open the stock panel first. From window, you will need to load some stocks. As you can see here, it's on. Let's turn it on again. And it's pop up right here where we can search for images directly within the program. All right. Let's search for some kind of city. Okay, that would be definitely a raster image. Okay, and let's load it into our project. That's nice. I don't need this panel anymore, so we'll close this. Mm -hmm. And now we got a project with actual vector image. As you can see, it's image. We can replace the image easily. We can even rasterize this to be just a pixel layer. But let's take a look in here. So as I mentioned, we can select area of the image. And as you can see, if I'm not holding my mouse down, this magnetic tool actually is snapping itself to uh, objects. So that can be helpful. You can double click to finish with selection. All right, so we got free selection and most of us will prefer to use this one, selection brush tool. So this way we can just select the area we need with the brush tool. And if you select too much, you can change the brush tool into subtract and you can take it out of the selection. All right, so that's something you may be familiar with from the actual raster editing software. And now we select part of this road. All right, and finally, there's also flat selection. Some people call this magic wand. So this will select area of the similar color, right? So if you got something with very similar color like the sky, you can select that as well. All right, so as you can see, the whole top part of the toolbar is dedicated into selection tools because it's important for us to select certain areas. By the way, if you are already create vector art and then you move to pixel persona, it's, there's a way easier method for selection. Take a look.
Let me just jump back to vectors <laughs> and draw some vectors and stuff here. Let's say I got this vector circle in my project and I'm in pixel persona, right? So I don't need to try to select that. I just hold command and click on it in the layer panel and it's selected now. So if you create some kind of illustration in the vector form and you got separate layers with different vectors, you can select that by holding command or control and then clicking on the layer. So the whole layer will be selected. All right, let's move forward. What's next? We got pixel tool over here. As you can guess, that will give us a very tiny brush with just one pixel. So that's something perfect for the pixel art. You can enlarge this and we got this square, super sharp brush. So this is something you may use for pixel art and very, very fine finishing touches. So this is a special version of the brush. Some people like to call it pencil tool. All right, so this is this pixel pencil tool for you to use. And below that, there's a regular brush. So you got paint brush tool. And while using this, don't forget to search for brushes here on the right side, because there are so many different brushes for us to choose from. There's a basic one, of course, the round brush, blur or sharp, and there's so many other brushes, right? We get watercolors, for example, and we can even turn on the wet edges at the top. And this way you can, you can paint with watercolors. I got spray brush here, sorry. Let's select a watercolor brush. And as you can see, we got those wet edges, so it's blending nicely and leaving more color, more color at the edge of it. So we can paint over stuff. And as I mentioned, it's really easy to finish up your vector illustration with nice raster effects, raster brushes. All right, so this is the classic brush tool, nothing new. The new addition for version two is we can actually Take a look here, this little brush icon on this layer. If I click on that, they will show me a preview which brush brushes we use on this layer. So I can reselect the previous brush from here. I don't need to search for them in the brush panel again. So that's helpful. Okay, below that, there's a eraser brush tool. Unfortunately, I didn't brush on the separate new layer. So if I erase now, I will erase everything all pixels, everything's gone. Take a look for eraser brush tool. We can also adjust the size, opacity, wet edges, even the tip of the eraser at the top as well. Okay, next thing is flat tool, also called a bucket tool, right? So we can put a color in the empty area like this one. Not a problem. Next thing, we got dot brush tool. And what else? There is also burn tool coming together and smudge tool. Just keep in mind that the color you are clicking on first will be the one you are moving. So I'm moving this red color to outside. Let's make it larger and stronger so we can overdo it a bit. You see? So it's like brushing the wet paint in the painting. We can lick this color out. It's gonna be really helpful for digital painting, digital art. And if I click on outside, I can push the color from outside into this red area. So this way we can really blend those two colors here. Big mess. All right, what else? There's a blur brush so we can blur the area without blurring the whole picture. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a texture on the sky. And that's something we can blur out with this tool. Take a look now, it's way smoother. So we can have a local blur that we control like a brush using this tool. Very handy. If you've got some kind of old picture recovery, you've got some unnecessary texture coming from scanning, for example, you can quickly blur the backdrop on this old picture. All right, and the opposite is a sharpen brush. So we can use some local sharpening local sharpen you can sharpen your eyes her while blurring the backdrop so we got local control take a look over sharpen this already it's so sharp now 
All right, then there's a very classic color picker. By the way, did you know you can pick colors from outside the canvas? I just pick color from, from my interface. I can pick color from another window, another program. So you can just click on the color picker, hold it, and then you can pick any color you want, even from outside the program. There's a hand tool that I never use. Why I never use hand tool? Because I prefer to just press the space bar and then you can use the hand tool, pan tool to pan around, moving the camera around, you can say. All right, so don't switch to, to this little hand. Instead of switching your hand, just click space bar. That's the best way. And there's a zoom tool that I never use as well. <laughs> Instead of zooming with the tool, I tend to use comment plus and comment minus. And that's our mini raster editor built in in this great vector software. So that's just a small vector editor, mostly used not for editing pictures, but for texturizing, editing our projects that we start in vector and then we finish up as the raster one. But if you really want, you can use it for the pictures as well. All right, guys, so that's our pixel persona tools. Don't forget to check out the previous video about where I cover all of the vector tools as well. And I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.